Hello, boys and girls. I'm back with the book that we talked about, Goonie Bird Green, and I'm going to go ahead and start reading the first chapter to you. The thing is, I uh, am filming this with my phone, okay? So I have to make sure I have the phone really close here because I want to make sure that you can read the words along with me, and I hope I don't hit my phone while I'm reading. Okay, so you can follow along if you want to or just listen. This is chapter one. There was a new student in the Water Tower Elementary School. She arrived in October after the first month of school had already passed. She opened the second grade classroom door at 10 o'clock on a Wednesday morning and appeared there all alone without even a mother to introduce her. She was wearing pajamas and cowboy boots and was holding a dictionary and a lunchbox. Hello, Mrs. Pigeon said, Hello, Mrs. Pigeon, the second grade teacher said. We're in the middle of our spelling lesson. Good, said the girl in pajamas. I brought my dictionary. Where's my desk? Uh, who are you? Mrs. Pigeon asked politely. I'm your new student. My name is Goonie Bird Green. That's green with a silent E at the end. And I just moved here from China. I want a desk right smack in the middle of the room because I like to be right smack in the middle of everything. Okay, I'm going to share that picture with you. That's on the next page. The class stared at the new girl with admiration. They had never met anyone like Goonie Bird Green. She was a good student. She sat down at the desk Mrs. Pigeon provided right smack in the middle of everything and began doing second grade spelling. She did all her work neatly and quickly and she followed instructions. But soon it was clear that Goonie Bird Green, excuse me, it's, but soon it was clear that Goonie Bird was mysterious and interesting. Her clothes were unusual. Her hairstyles were unusual. Even her lunches were unusual. At lunchtime on Wednesday, her first day in the school, she opened her lunchbox and brought out sushi and a pair of bright green chopsticks. On Thursday, her second day at Water Tower Elementary School, Goody Bird Green was wearing a pink ballet tutu over green stretch pants, and she had three small red grapes, an avocado, and an oatmeal cookie for lunch. On Thursday afternoon, after lunch, Mrs. Pigeon stood in front of the class with a piece of chalk in her hand. Today, she said, we're going to continue talking about stories. Yay, the second grader said in very loud voices. All but Felicia Ann, who never spoke, and Malcolm, who wasn't paying attention. He was under his desk as usual. Goonie Bird, you weren't here for the first month of school, but our class has been learning about what makes good stories, haven't we? Mrs. Pigeon said. Everyone nodded. All but Malcolm, who was under his desk doing something with scissors. Class, what does a story need most of all? Who remembers? Mrs. Pigeon had her chalkboard hand her chalk hand in the air ready to write something on the board. The children were silent for a minute. They were thinking. Finally, Chelsea raised her hand. Chelsea, what does a story need? A book, Chelsea said. Mrs. Pigeon put her chalk hand down. There are many stories that don't need a book, she said pleasantly. Aren't there, class? If your grandma tells you a story about when she was a little girl, she doesn't have that story in a book, does she? The class stared at her, all but Malcolm, who was still under his desk, and Felicia Ann, who always looked at the floor, never raised her hand, and never spoke. Beanie said, my grandma lives in Boston. Keiko said, my grandma lives in Honolulu. Ben said loudly, my grandma lives in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Trisha shouted, my grandma is very rich. Class, said Mrs. Pigeon, shh. Then, in a quieter voice, she explained, Another time we will talk about our families. But right now, she stopped talking and looked at Barry Tuckerman. Barry was up on his knees in his seat, and his hand was waving in the air as hard as he could make it wave. Barry, Mrs. Pigeon said, do you have something that you simply have to say? Something that cannot possibly wait? Barry nodded yes. His hand waved. 
And what is so important, Barry stood up beside his desk. Barry Tuckerman liked to make very important speeches, and they always required that he stand. My grandma, Barry Tuckerman said, went to jail once. She was 20 years old, and she went to jail for civil disobedience. Then Barry sat down. Thank you, Barry. Now look at what I'm writing on the board. Who can read this word? Everyone, all but Malcolm and Felicia Ann, watched as she wrote the long word. Then they shouted it out. Beginning! Good, said Mrs. Pigeon. Now I'm sure you all know this one. She wrote again. Middle, the children shouted. Good. And can you guess what the last word will be? She held up her chalk and waited. And correct, Mrs. Pigeon said. Good for you, second graders. Those are the parts of a, that a story needs. Those are the parts that a story needs. A beginning, a middle, and an end. Now, I'm, go I'm going to write another very long word on the board. Let's see what good readers you are. She wrote a C and then an H. Mrs. Pigeon, someone called. She wrote an A and then an R. Mrs. Pigeon, several children were calling now. She turned to see what was so important. Malcolm was standing beside his desk. He was crying. Malcolm needs to go to the nurse, Mrs. Pigeon, Beanie said. Mrs. Pigeon went to Malcolm and knelt beside him. What's the trouble, Malcolm, she asked, but he couldn't stop crying. I know, I know, Nicholas said. Nicholas always knew everything, and his desk was beside Malcolm's. Tell me, Nicholas, remember Keiko showed us how to make origami stars? All of the second graders reached into their desks and their pockets and their lunch boxes. There were tiny stars everywhere. Keiko had shown them how to make origami stars out of small strips of paper. The stars were very easy to make. The school janitor had complained just last Friday that he was sweeping up hundreds of origami stars. Malcolm put one in his nose, Nicholas said, and now he can't get it out. Is that correct, Malcolm? Mrs. Pigeon asked. Malcolm nodded and wiped his eyes. Don't sniff, Malcolm. Do not sniff. That is an order. She took his hand and walked him to the classroom door. She turned to the class. Children, she said, I'm going to be gone for exactly one minute and 30 seconds while I walk Malcolm to the nurse's office down the hall. Stay in your seats while I'm gone. Think about the word character. A character is what a story needs. When I come back from the nurse's office, we're going to create a story together. You must choose who the main character will be. Talk amongst yourselves quietly. Think about interesting characters like Abraham Lincoln or perhaps Christopher Columbus or Babe Ruth, called Ben. Yes, Babe Ruth is a possibility. I'll be right back. Mrs. Pigeon left the classroom with Malcolm. When she returned one minute and 30 seconds later without Malcolm, the class was waiting. They had been whispering all but Felicia Ann, who never whispered. Have you chosen? She asked. The class nodded. All of their heads went up and down, except Felicia Ann's, because she always looked at the floor. And your choice is? All of the children, but Felicia Ann called out together, Goonie Bird Green, they called. Mrs. Pigeon sighed. <sighs> class, there are many different kinds of stories. There are stories about imaginary creatures like Dumbo, Trisha called out. Raise your hand if you want to speak, please, Mrs. Pigeon said. But yes, Trisha, you're correct. Dumbo is an imaginary character. There are also stories about real people from history like Christopher Columbus and... She stopped. Barry Tuckerman was waving and waving his hand. Yes, Barry, do you have something very important to say? Barry Tuckerman stood up. He twisted the bottom of his shirt around and around in his fingers. I forget he said at last. Well, sit back down then, Barry. Now, I thought, class, that since Christopher Columbus's birthday's coming up, soon, she looked at Barry Tuckerman, whose hand was waving like a windmill once again. Barry, 
she said. Barry Tuckerman stood up again. We already know all the stories about Christopher Columbus, he said. We want to hear a true story about Goonie Bird Green. Yes, Goonie Bird Green, the class called. Mrs. Pigeon sighed again. I'm afraid I don't know many facts about Goonie Bird Green, she said. I know a lot of facts about Christopher Columbus, though. Christopher Columbus was born in... We want Goonie Bird, the class chanted. Goonie Bird, Mrs. Pigeon said finally. Excuse me, Goonie Bird, Mrs. Pigeon said finally. How do you feel about this? Goonie Bird Green stood up beside her desk in the middle of the room. Can I tell the story, she asked. Can I be right smack in the middle of everything? Can I be the hero? Well, since you would be the main character, Mrs. Pigeon said, I guess that would put you in the middle of everything. I guess that would make you the hero. Good, Goonie Bird said. I will tell you an absolutely true story about me. And that is the end of chapter one. So when we come back together, we're going to go ahead and read chapter two. I enjoyed that. I hope you did too. And go to the video that says Story Goonie 2 for chapter two. All right. Bye-bye now.